Okay, we'll, uh, we'll kick off. I think we've probably got everybody, uh, everybody in. Um, so firstly, thank you for, for coming to this session, um, which has been named the uh, Are You Working With A Crap Shop Window? Um, sometimes in life you don't get the chance to choose the title of your presentation, and this one was most definitely chosen for me, but hopefully it will make sense as we go through. So my name is Gary Roberts, uh, and I'm responsible for marketing and sales and pre-sales and partnerships within Forit. Um, Forit are an Azure-based content management system um, with international clients. I'll talk about those a little later. And we're actually based here in the, in the heart of Edinburgh. So we're, we're based at Waverley Gate, even though we've got, as I said, international clients uh, globally. So um, I'll start off with a slightly odd picture. Um, I can say that now because my CEO's in it and he's not in the room. Um, but this was probably about 15 to 20 odd years ago. Um, this was an event at Microsoft. Uh, if you look five across from the right, you can see uh, Bill Gates. Another five across, the guy in the sort of pale pink shirt is Peter Proud, who's now the chief executive of Forit. Um, everybody else there will have a, a label on, a badge, um, and they're everybody from within uh, Unilever at the time. And this was one of the first meetings that they pulled together at Microsoft, which was across all of marketing and across all of IT as they were trying to embrace at Unilever the next steps in digital transformation. So probably slightly ahead of their time, but apparently a fascinating, I wasn't at this one, but apparently a fascinating meeting uh, about how we together can work to drive our digital transformation. I think one of the conclusions that came out of that event was the digital transformation, it's, it's here, it's real, it's happening. Um, but the perception going into the room was it was very much the digital transformation was a technical issue. Um, and I think what's come out then, and, and certainly more recently, is digital transformation is not just a technical issue. Uh, it's not about systems. It's not about systems replacement. It's very much a business issue, and it's very much a cultural issue within organizations. We've had a couple of conversations upstairs about you know, how people are embracing <coughs> digital transformation. And more often than not, it's not the technology that's getting in the way. It's the business cultural changes that are, are preventing us from moving on. So your website is the shop window to your organization. So if you indulge me for a few minutes, I started my career um, back in the early 80s with an organization called British Home Stores, um, BHS. Um, good to see a couple of people nodding who remember them. Um, sadly, they're no longer around. Um, but I joined them as a graduate trainee. And as a graduate trainee, you get to ask, sort of experience all aspects of, of the retail world, including window dressing. And British home stores took their window dressing incredibly seriously. Um, we used to have mantras like, window dressing is about stopping the passerby from passing by, um, and corny stuff like that. Um, but that was, it was all about ensuring that the shop window looked right. We used to have our shop windows cleaned every single morning, so there was no mess from the previous night on our shop window. If there was a crack in the window, we had emergency services to come and replace the glass. The contents, of the window must be up to date, the, the product must be A, available, it must be priced right, and it must be easy to find when the shopper came back into the store. And all the time, it all made sense and it all felt very relatable to the world of retail. But here we are 40 years on, um, and the reality is that's exactly where we are with websites today. That the website is the shop window to our organization. And people pace, will make judgments on your organization uh, and its values based on the initial glance at, at the website. So what came out of the discussion that Peter would have talked about if he was here with Unilever, what's come out of the discussions I've been having in the last 20 years while I've been involved in MarTech has been that when we talk about websites, Quite often, it's initially thought that the website is the CMO's issue, it's the CMO's domain, it's marketing's problem, when in fact, it's quite often everybody's part of the organization that they actually come together to work on the website. And there's a number of reasons I'll go into in a second uh, as to why this is absolutely key. Organizations that work purely in silos 
uh, and drive their website environment on their own, be that marketing or be that IT, are typically going to struggle in the web environments or the web situations we find ourselves in today. By the way, you notice there's a plug for Lego there and I'll come back to that. Um, security concerns is probably the number one thing we, we talk about these days. Actually, there's a lady called uh, Jane Fraser who is the CEO of Citibank. I don't know if anybody from Citibank is here. No, that, Jane's over in Dubai at the moment and, and she quoted, this was quoted this week of saying that the S of ESG should now be changed from social to security, such as the implications that if there are security issues uh, within you know, your web environment or your organization. Forrett conducted a, um, a survey recently where we, we surveyed 250 CMOs, CIOs, CDOs, CTOs about their web environment. Um, and within the survey, the results was that 50% of the respondents said that they had had a security breach via their CMS within the last three years. And a majority of the respondents had come from the financial services industry. Um, and, you know, 50% of those said they are really concerned about the rise in cyber attacks that they are getting. And the, one of the access points is typically through their web environment. 88% of the respondents talked about the fact that they had more than three multiple um, CMS vendors. So within that, that increases the vulnerability, it increases the risk, and it increases the impact on brand. It's interesting, I was at a, a CMO um, dinner last week, and there was a discussion typically around the um, responsibility of security. And at the start of the workshop, the view was so security is IT's issue. Security is that of the CS, CIO, the CISO. By the end of the workshop, the agreement was this is everybody's responsibility and concern because if you get a data breach, if you get an attack, the impact that has on brand, the impact that has on reputation is such that it's quite often not retrievable. And suddenly at that point, CMOs in the organization were saying, yes, this is me too. This is not just about my CIO. Following on from the security side is, is the impact that has on integration. So, you know, we know with security issues, they come in via the content management system, um, but the content management system is typically integrated with a number of systems within the organization. And typically, we could easily end up within your financial system. So there was 34% talked about the fact that there was a real genuine concern about the implications and the impact that the security risks were having via their, their CMS system. And a further 43% talked about the security implications of third-party add-ons. Before I joined Forit, I worked for an, an open source content management system. And our number one issue were effectively what we call the plugins. Um, and the fact that those plugins were driven by open source developers, uh, accountability was an often an issue. If your core system was on content management system was upgraded, did that mean that everybody around it via the plugins was upgraded? Typically not, um, which A, created vulnerabilities, and secondly, normally caused freezes or, or even a, a 404 page, um, which again is a reflection on your organization and an impact on, on your brand and, and reputation. And if all this is happening, um, and when this happens, you know, what are the implications to, to your organizations? Typically, your IT gets dragged away from what they're doing to, to fix. Um, security, the reputation starts to drop, and quite often, particularly within financial services and regulatory bodies, um, there is ramifications around um, you know, the, the reputation of implications of um, security, implications on your legislation that you are breaking because you've got to get messages out in a particular time. And least of all marketing, as we talked about, the reputation and the, the risk to, uh, to brand. This brings us on to, to content uh, and creation um, and the fact that, you know, these days we've had so many conversations upstairs on, on the stand around organizations who come to us and talk about localization. 
So quite often, websites are created in, in English, uh, be that American English uh, or proper English, and, and they will then look to roll that out ac across the world. And there's been conversations just upstairs where people are saying, yeah, it can be three or four weeks before I can get this out to Asia. Um, and what we're very happy about within Forit, uh, we run the Microsoft websites on the Forit platform, is we get this out within hours uh, upon the release of the English version as opposed to two weeks. And again, that has all sorts of implications on you know, the potential of legislation where you've got to get messages out fast. Uh, and it has implications on revenue um, where you know, we're able to get the right messages, the right people at the right time um, in the appropriate localization. And of course, within localization, it's not pure translation. It will, you know, if you come to the stand upstairs, one of the things we talk about is the fact that you know, localization could be just the way we talk about the word flavor and spelt in American and how we spend that in, in English in the, in the UK. So localization has become a, a really, really key part for both. Now, interestingly, when we did the survey, feedback we were getting is you know, about a third of the respondents were saying you know, they need a localized website and don't have one. Um, about half of the respondents were saying they don't even bother with localization and translation because it simply takes too long. By the time they get the message out globally, the, the message is gone. And a, a further quarter is sort of saying that the content management system that they have today, it just simply doesn't do translation and localization. And with that comes speed to market. So, you know, again, you know, within financial services, within regulatory bodies, within utilities, it is absolutely key to start getting content out as quickly as it can. And yet a third of the organizations that we surveyed says that to get the messages out appropriately and quickly is taking far too long. A part of that is the dependency quite often that content management systems have on IT. Um, and you know what we're seeing the content management uh, environment at the moment is a lot of organizations are trying to get to the point where you know building pages, creating messages is actually done by built page builders as opposed to the requirement they need to have an IT person alongside them. So again, the impact of, of this, be it localization, be it speed to market, is that IT gets inundated with multiple requests to be supporting the CMS environment. Um, I mean, marketing get frustrated because they perceive that IT are taking too long to support them in getting the messages out globally. Um, security is, has the implications that they are slow in getting you know, legislative messages out to the world. Um, and yeah, the frustration on marketing is that you know, it's too slow, they're being beaten up to get the messages and the pages out quickly, and it's being held up in their eyes by IT. So say in the last 20 years, in my experience of you know, working alongside uh, MarTech organizations, um, the best um, organizations are the ones who manage to pull together designated teams who are focusing on the website environment, not just from marketing, but right across the whole business. So everybody plays a part, be it IT, be it security, um, be it marketing, be it business messaging, uh, pull together into teams around the, around the website environment. And this brings me on to Forit. So, <clears throat> you know, I, I said at the start, whilst we're based here in Edinburgh and we've got offices in London, uh, our client base is international, it's global. Um, we do the uh, websites for Tesco Bank, we do the websites for Lloyds of London, we do the websites for Microsoft. Um, and that is all based on the security of Azure. Um, we pride ourselves on the fact that we are secure and we are scalable. Um, pride ourselves on the fact that we are easy to use and once the frameworks have been created and once the, the, the regulations have been agreed, that the, the pages can be built easily by page builders as opposed to the needing the requirement um, of IT or anybody technical to make that happen. Um, we are, we, we just won a piece of business recently um, over in, in the US with a, with a wealth funder. Um, and the reason we won that, they moved off WordPress uh, or moving them off WordPress today to, um, to Forit 
is because of the concerns of the open source environment and the implications that had on security. Now the reality is in their web environment, there was no way they were going to be able to access client data or funds, but just the reputation of having a website that doesn't perform as they wanted to was big enough for them to say, we need to move away from open source and we need to come to an Azure platform uh, and go on to Forit. We're talking at the moment with a big organization in Scotland, a government organization who have in this, I think it's in the region of about 700 sites. And the reason that they're coming to talk to us is because I think looking at it, they almost have every single flavor of vendor and platform in their current environment. And they want to consolidate down to one and centralize the content makers so that the messages going out there are consistent. Um, and you, know, you get all the benefits of scale of coming with one provider as opposed to multiple providers. Again, you see the subtle uh, dig on, uh, on Lego. The reason I keep doing that is we have a, uh, we have a Lego box, uh, which is a Porsche 911 uh, on our stand. And it's simply a come and chat to us. We'll scan and you're entered into the draw, which will be done later. Uh, what's amusing me, I was saying to one of my colleagues earlier is the number of guys who come and say, uh, oh yeah, my, uh, my kids would love that. And you think, no, no, it's, <laughs> this is not for your kids. This is for you. But it's up there. It's fascinating. It's, uh, it's actually a nice bit of kit. And uh, yeah, to come and talk to us, let us, let us scan your badge and enter the draw um, and we will uh, we'll help you on your way with your Lego for the winner. Um, so that's really all I wanted to say. As I say, we, you know, we, we've done a lot of work around getting the feedback from the survey, uh, understanding what the pain points are of organizations today, be that on the marketing side uh, or on the technical side. Um, we've worked with a lot of organizations who are looking to move away from their current environments uh, and, and come to Forit. Um, for all the reasons I've just talked about. Um, all I would say is, you know, if, if you've got situations that are specific to you uh, and don't particularly want to ask in front of a wider group, then please come up to the stand. I'm there with two or three colleagues. Um, we'd, we'd love to talk to you and we'd love to understand, you know, your situation and see whether we could uh, help you on your way. And if anybody wants any of the data from the report, I mean, I've literally skimmed the surface today. Um, you know, let us know and we'll happily send you the, the full report. There's a, there's a lot of interesting statistics that come out of that, uh, that survey. But with that, I, I will pause and say, I know it's difficult sometimes in a wider group to ask questions about you know, your, your web environment and security concerns or the look and feel. But if you have got any, uh, any questions now, I'll happily take them. There is a mic actually, it's, it's, it's for the benefit of the recording rather than your, uh, the room. All right, hi. So I'm, my name is Adriel. I'm working at Heineken. Thank you for the, the talk. It was really informative. Um, the main question I had was um, regarding the emergence of CMS. It's usually, so one of the biggest benefits of CMS is that it's low code, no code platforms that makes it easier and more accessible for stakeholders to use within companies. Even though that's the main selling point of, C, uh, one of the biggest selling points for CMS, we still see a lot of um, technical stakeholders taking ownership of CMS within companies. So it's always someone from IT who still has access and is maintaining um, CMSs within the company. Um, so. With that, do you, from your experience or your personal opinion on this, do you think that both all three marketing, security, and IT teams need to be given access to manage the CMS platforms, or is it still more secure and um, a more of a conventional way of working where only one stakeholder has access to manage and make changes on a CMS? Yeah, it's a great point. So I, <coughs> my view would be is initially, I believe everybody needs to come together, you know, and you start to build your frameworks, um, and, and there needs an element of testing that everybody is comfortable with, you know, the data flow, how it's going to be used. I think once that's been agreed, I think ultimately the stakeholder is the marketing department. Um, and, you know, by that point, they'll have understood what the brand values are, what the look and feel will be, uh, and that can be controlled as tightly as you like or as, or as loosely as you like. Um, and also, you know, there's certain rules of governance. So it has to go through three stages. So there might be some sign-offs, um, which, which is all, you, you can change that as much as you like within the forex situation. So you, I think Heineken are on Sitecore uh, currently. Um, I think they've got the similar flexibility of sign-off. Um, but yeah, I think the, the key thing is it starts off with a big team. I think the important thing is that, that for me, that comes down to being owned by the business for the look and feel. I can see that I've got there's an opinion at the back. No, um, I'm one of Gary's colleagues. Um. But I was just going to say, um, we've 
working, um, as Gary said, Lloyds of London is one of our clients. The only people that have access to this CMS are two content editors. They have no IT, um, not even kind of, you know, digital leads have access and they manage absolutely fine. Um, and that was a problem for them. Too many people had access to their previous systems um, and everything just got really messy. And they, so now they've locked it down. Like Gary says, you've got that option to lock it down to kind of three people. You can have it more, but if you really want to kind of keep it tight, then you can do that. Yeah. And, and I mean, Lawyers of London is an interesting one because that was on um, Sitecore. And when that was changed to Forit, and, and then, you know, as, as Shelley was saying, the changes that were made there, but it actually wasn't a system change. It, it, is, it goes back to what I was saying at the start about being a cultural change. Um, it was just rules that the business had to agree on. And that's, the, again, it's the coming together. Um, <clears throat> I think quite often when people are, respon are responsible for security, you know, in, a, in an environment which is open to attack, um, they want to be involved in every stage. Um, the reality is, I think once it's been set up and it's controlled, they don't need to be involved in every stage. However, it's probably not a bad thing to have regular reviews with the full team, so you're, uh, you're comfortable that there's no chance of uh, any malware sort of getting in. That's a great question, thank you. Any other questions for now? Or, let's say, free feel to come up to the, uh, to the stand. Feel free to get zapped for the, uh, for the Lego opportunity. I, I dare say my colleagues will probably zap you on the way out as well. Um, but if there's any specific conversations you'd like to have uh, around your environment, we'd, we'd be more than happy to uh, chat and, and share more. But with that, thanks for coming, and uh, catch you later. <laughs> Cheers.